Now is the winter of our discontent. May the glorious summer by this sun of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious weaves. Our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreaded marches to delightful measures. Grim visage war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now instead of mounting barred in steeds to fight the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I, that am rudely stamped, and wants love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, set before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lonely and unfashionable that dogs Bark at me as I halt by them. Hmm. Why, I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away my time, lest to spy my shadow in the sun and discount on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if King Edward prove as true and just as I am, subtle, false and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer shall be 